Hello. <laughs> Hi. This isn't a proper episode. This is... Of course it is. It's just the cooking channel it's part. It's the cooking channel part. Um, so this is me finishing off uh, the cheese in the last video. Um, I've made the cheese, or I've made the cheddar. Had the whey left. With the whey I made ricotta. Um, Which was actually really nice. It was nice, yeah. I forgot to take a picture <laughs> of the finished product. I, I took one, but it was about after about four days. Uh, um, so it didn't look quite as nice. And you gave one did. to a friend who said it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and she used it to make uh, lasagna or cannelloni or something. Um, we cooked with it one night, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Made cannelloni. Um, yeah, it's excellent. And it's sort of a freebie, if you like, because it just comes from the way. So that was good. And then Teresa also um, does a carrot cake, which was my sort of birthday cake. It was your birthday cake, yeah, but I went into overdrive and made a few more. Yeah, and there's a tiny bit of me and Vida making the first batch of wine. Um, the next video, um, there's uh, also a little bit of me and Vida making uh, the first batch of wine from some early grapes. Um, that is actually about 10 days ago. <laughs> um, so there's a bit of deja vu in this video because this one will come out before the next one but the next one is I think it's been quite hard because we've had, well not hard but it's been disjointed because we've had Bida here yeah and we've been off and we've done stuff and just you've been working so it's all got a bit yeah mishmashed so anyway you'll see us again at the end of the next video which we just did five minutes ago yeah, keep you on your toes so <laughs> <laughs> so this one is for a video that was 10 days ago that we're recording this bit now but we're also recording this bit now for the video we just made yes if you're not confused you will be ciao bye so this is the ricotta cheese on the go essentially this is just the way from the cheddar cheese i've been making um and a about a litre and a half of milk was left over from the warm milk that I bought from the local farm. I've now got to heat this up to 90 degrees. I'm, oh, I've added a couple of tablespoons of uh, cheese salt or non-iodinised non salt. Iodinised? Iodinised. Oh, anyway, no iodine in it. <laughs> um, so this has got to be heated up to 90 degrees and then Basically all you do is you put half a cup of vinegar in and skim off all the curds that form on the top and that's your ricotta. So I've just got to slowly bring it up to 90 degrees, stirring occasionally. So here's Vida giving me a hand to pick some grapes for the wine this afternoon. Grapes have suffered this year from the drought, um, but it seems to still be a reasonable amount. And at least the birds haven't got to them yet this year. Um, they're not all ripe yet. Some are definitely ripe, some aren't. So I'm just going along testing individual vines and then we're picking them if they're over 22% uh, bricks or 22% sugar. So the, the whey and the litre and a half of milk are now up to Coming up to 90 degrees, I've been stirring, the trees have been stirring while I've been up with Vida picking grapes. So it's now up to temperature. So I'm going to put some cider vinegar in. Um, you can use any, you can use any vinegar. Um, a nice white distilled vinegar is probably best, but I've, I haven't got any. So cider vinegar is the next best thing. I'm literally just going to pour that in. Give it a quick stir and that should soon start we we'll turn the heat off as well that should now start to coagulate and come to the top That's it. now I've just got to wait five minutes for the vinegar to do its thing Right, so it's had five minutes uh, um, for the curds to form. So I'm just going to fill up. We've got some little moulds, um, and then whatever's left, I'm just going to put in that colander. So 
hope that I can do this without making too much mess. I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs> Try and figure a way to do it. That's probably better. Right. I've no idea how much we're gonna get from this. I think that's about it. I think I'll leave that just to see if anything else comes to the surface, essentially. And we've got some nice little ricottas. Let them drain out for a while. So that's it. <laughs> Cheese making done for the day. Now we're on to wine making. So as usual, my plans never go to plan. <laughs> um, we had a bloody great thunderstorm come over and it's absolutely heaving, heaved down um, to the point where the roof leaked. Uh, and it's not ideal making wine when the grapes are soaking wet. But we've already picked loads, so I've got to carry on. Um, I'm only going to pick another couple of basketfuls, uh, enough so I can make about... Uh, 40 odd litres, um, it's not too bad, the, the first, or, or we've, we've picked about, uh, I don't know, 35 kilos of dry grapes, um, so a few wet bunches probably won't hurt, so I'm going to go and pick those, um, we've finished making the cheese now, uh, get that done, and Vida's now cooking a roast, um, in case you're wondering, Teresa's a bit out of action today. She's not been feeling very well at all. She's got stomach problems today. Uh, she, she's helping out here and there, but she's really not in a very good way today. So anyway, let's carry on with the... I don't know where the camera thing is. I'm, I'm looking in the wrong place most of the time. Ah, I see where the thing is now. So I'm going to pick some more grapes. Then we're going to press them. Put them in a vat and make wine. Hiya. So today I'm going to be making a carrot cake. Um, it's Ivan's absolute favourite. Uh, I made one for his birthday and apparently it was the bomb. Uh, anyway, I'll show you what we've got. I can't work out his big camera. He's at work. So sorry, it's on my phone, but uh, we do the best. So I'll turn you around, show you what we've got. So here in front of us, we've got... 350 grams of shredded carrot then we've got 250 grams of all-purpose flour plain flour and then we've got one and a half teaspoons of baking uh, baking powder one teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt and so then we've also got four eggs from our chickens, I might add, 200 grams of sugar. You can use white sugar, but I think the brown one, it just makes it nicer and it's more of a, a darker cake. Uh, then we have uh, the zest of, it's one orange basically, it's three big teaspoons, and half a, half a teaspoon of the juice. Oops, sorry, there we go. And then, I've also got two teaspoons of raisins and three quarters of a cup of oil. So now we're actually gonna get to work. Right, so I've already greased and put baking paper in a nine inch cake tin. Um, so first of all, you start off with your flour, which is 250 grams of plain flour. And then we add to that your baking powder, your baking soda, and your salt, like so. And then also 
No, you did. Well, no, no, no. I'm getting ahead of myself. So give that a mix. Mix it all together, all your dry ingredients. There we go. Okay, so you've mixed your dry ingredients. So now what you're going to do is you're going to add your eggs. So there's four beaten eggs there. And also your 200 grams of sugar. And then whisk it up until it's nice and pale and fluffy. So we've got that and then what you do is you add your orange zest so there's three teaspoons there like so and your orange juice which is a teaspoon maybe a little bit more and then you give that a whisk just to incorporate it like so and then what you do is you add your oil which is three quarters of a cup vegetable oil but we don't really have vegetable oil over here so I use sunflower oil and it works just as well so pop that in give that a whisk as well So, and then we're done with these. So, there you go. This is where you love to make a mess. And then what we do is we've got your dry mix. Get yourself a nice spatula. It was me thinking I was organised, obviously not, because I didn't get the spatula out. <clears throat> and then with this dry mix, you just add it bit by bit. I'd probably do about half at a time, to be honest. And gently fold that. Obviously you don't want to knock the air out. I know a lot of recipes calls for um, mixed spice or nutmeg and cinnamon or whatever but this was just an alternative one that I found and after making it Ivan who he's a bit of a carrot cake king a bit of a connoisseur when it comes to his carrot cake he actually preferred it he said it was the best one so we'll stick with what works 
and also traditional carrot cake you'll have um, cream cheese and uh, that can work out quite expensive so this is I top this one with a, a buttercream and then just some walnuts or whatever nuts I've got hazelnuts whatever and then we pop the rest of that back in mix that as well probably should have done it in a bigger bowl but hey we're still there at the moment we're not overflowing so we'll mix that all in and we're getting there now starting to look like a cake mix as you can probably see Gives you a good darn workout, that's for sure. There we go, it's just about there. And then the last bit is your carrots. So that's 350 grams of shredded carrot. Yes, I do recycle plastic things from mushrooms and things that you get in the supermarket because there's never enough vessels in this house for this sort of thing. Yeah, I should have put this in a bigger bowl. Let's transfer into this one. Need a bit more room. So yeah, just incorporate all that. Get a good old even mix. This one's actually going over to Lynn and Adam tomorrow. No, Saturday, we're going to visit them. Um, and I know I'll be Max's favorite friend when he has a bit of cake. So once that is all mixed in, As it is, we then transfer it to our baking tin. And I've preheated the oven to 170. Ours is fan, so I put it at 170. Um, 160 is probably better if it's just a conventional oven. There we go. So once you've got that, don't let them escape, carrots get away. So now what you're going to do is you're going to give it a gentle tap, make sure there's no air bubbles and it's all even. And the last bit, is your raisins. Two teaspoons. All I do is scatter them on top. Fairly evenly. And then I use a straw. It's just literally almost not submerge them but just get them to grip onto the batter give them a few stirs make sure they're equally where they should be there we go you 
give it another tap. That's your carrot cake ready to go in the oven. And that will go in for an hour. And then I tend to put foil on the top after an hour. Leave it in for another half an hour. And then just let it cool down. And then you do your butter icing on the top. So I use icing sugar here, non-salted butter. And then I just scatter some chopped almonds on the top because that's all I've got at the moment. But there we go. I'll bring it back to you when it's finished. And with everything else that was going on, Teresa completely forgot to show everybody what it looked like when it came out of the oven. So here it is, half eaten by me. It was very, very nice. <laughs> and that's it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hold tight because there's another one coming out in just a couple of minutes time.